Great. Well, good evening, everyone. I want to thank uh, you all for joining us tonight. This is a community meeting for special use permit application SP 2021-02 St. John Family Life and Fitness Center. This meeting is being held pursuant to and in compliance with emergency ordinance number 20A16, an emergency ordinance to ensure the continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster and open meeting requirements of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. In attendance tonight are myself, Mariah Gleason, Senior Planner from Albemarle County. I am the lead reviewer of this application. We also have the applicant team who will introduce themselves as we go. Finally, listening in tonight, our supervisor, B. Lupisto Kirtley and Commissioner Corey Claiborne. So following the presentations tonight, we wanna to invite you to share your comments and questions during the Q&A portion of tonight's meeting. We're actually gonna hold all of the questions and comments for that period. So if you can just save your um, comments till the end, we will address them then. And then to participate online, you can do so by raising, clicking the raise hand button at the bottom of the toolbar. This will notify the meeting facilitator that you would like to speak and you will be placed in the meeting queue. If you're joining us by phone tonight, you can participate by, by clicking star nine to raise your hand and you will also be placed in the queue to speak. And again, I'll repeat these instructions when we get to the Q&A portion of tonight's agenda. So before turning this over to the applicant team, I'm gonna give a short presentation about the purpose of this meeting, the development review process, and some basic project information. So please bear with me while I share my screen. <coughs> Okay, so again, if you just tuned in, um, this is a community meeting for SP 2021-02 St. John Family Life and Fitness Center. So if you've attended a community meeting in the past year, this presentation may look familiar to you. We use a standard template when talking about special use permits and similar projects at community meetings. Um, the purpose of tonight's community meeting is to provide a space to share information about the proposed project, the development review process, and relevant policies and regulations. It's also to, to solicit public input on the proposed project. Um, a summary of this input is included in the staff report that's reviewed by the Planning Commission and Board of Supervisors as they consider approval of the application. So to provide some context for the review process for development in the county, we have this graphic. The image here is a bit fuzzy, from, but from what you can see in the colored blocks, um, the colored blocks represent stages of the county review process. Mariah, we can't see your screen. Oh, no. <laughs> How long have I been going? The whole time. <laughs> okay, well, there wasn't much, there wasn't much to see until now, folks. Can you see the screen now? No. Okay. Well, I can also do this without the presentation. So let's just. I hope I didn't mess it up for you, Mariah. Oh, no, I don't. No. I did that. Um, but let's see if we can get back, get back to it. I'm sorry for the delay. Do you see a forest? Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can start here. Do you see? Do you see the screen now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yes. Thank you for the input on the for the panelists <laughs> and letting me know. Um, okay. So this is the graphic that I wanted to share. Um, it may be a bit fuzzy on the screens, but um, it's showing colored blocks and those colored blocks represent stages of the county development process. Um, I can talk more to this process, but the important takeaway here is that this project <coughs> is at the beginning of the process. So we're, we're really in at the um, front of this yellow tan box that um, represents the legislative review. And I'll go into what that means. Um, so to start, the county zoning ordinance dictates what can be done by right on a property today. The county staff review proposed developments to make sure that they meet regulations within the zoning ordinance to protect public health, safety, and welfare. Um, staff legally cannot deny a by right use. 
the review process for a by right use is called an administrative review. The process we are currently in is a legislative review, which means that the approval um, approval from the Board of Supervisors is required. This is because the applicant is requesting a use on the property that is not a by right use, but what is called a special use. Special use applications have a higher level of review. Um, that, re that includes review by um, county staff and other agencies as applicable. So VDOT, Albemarle County Service Authority, um, the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors. The Planning Commission Board of Supervisors consider special use applications at what are called special, or excuse me, public hearing meetings. Public hearings include presentations by staff, the applicant, and a public comment period. You're welcome to attend and comment on this project at those meetings as additional opportunities beyond this meeting tonight. Um, no date has been set for either meeting yet. Aspects that are considered during the review of a special use permit include that no substantial detriment is created, that the character of the nearby area is unchanged, harmony, which just means that the proposed special use is in harmony with the purpose of, in this case, the rural area, and consistency with the comprehensive plan. So next, I'm going to quickly provide some contextual information on this project. The applicant will um, the applicant's presentations will dive deeper into this, but just as a broad overview, uh, the proposal um, for this application is for a community center use that would occupy an existing historic 1,500 square foot building on a 6.1 acre parcel that also contains a church, which is St. John Baptist Church and a cemetery. The proposed project is located at 1569 St. John Road on tax map 66, parcel 79. The proposal includes mostly interior changes to the historic building with a few minor exterior changes to make the building ADA accessible. Um, in terms of the timeline of, this, of the process, uh, staff reviewed the proposal and sent comments to the applicant on March 5th. Um, the, and again, the Planning Commission public hearing and the Board of Supervisors public hearing have not been set yet. Um, so we don't have dates for you here tonight, but they will be set in the future. Um, if you would like to provide comments on this proposal, um, as included in the letter that you received to um, invite you to this meeting, we're asking that, um, or I'm asking that you send comments to me by Wednesday, March 31st, that's one week from tonight, so that I can include it in the staff report that is going to, that will be um, taken to the, the Planning Commission and Board of Supervisors. So I've provided my email below. Um, I'll bring this um, slide up again at the very end of the meeting in case um, you want to copy down my email address. My contact information is also available on the county website. But from here, I'm actually going to turn it over to the applicant to give you more information about the project. So I'll stop sharing now. Okay. Good evening. Um, my name is Rebecca Kenny. I'm the board president. Uh, of the St. John Family Life and Fitness Center. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to talk to you about the St. John Family Life and Fitness Center. This is a nonprofit uh, established in 20, uh, 2011, and the purpose is to encourage understanding about the early education for African Americans in the surrogated South and to transform this historical landmark into a health education in the community center. Our first goal is to restore our historical landmark, which is the St. John Rosenwald School. And um, this is the center of the school that a lot of the, uh, most of the African-Americans in the Cobham area first began their education. And that included me because I went to the school also the last two years before it closed. My mother went to the school. 
And so it's this way for a lot of the alumni that still live in the community, either their parents or uh, some ancestor uh, attended the school. So it had deep meaning to us because it, it uh, represents our education. Our first goal is to restore and preserve it. And uh, this will be a place where you can come and uh, enjoy hearing us tell stories about the time and uh, that we spend in the school. It uh, will be a place that we'll have exercise. We'll have an exercise room. We will have exercise classes. We will have classes and workshops that you can attend, lectures. In addition, you'll be able to spend time in our resource library and also walk down memory lane with us as we tell our stories about our experiences in the school and uh, about the neighborhood and about the school as well as the church because they all kind of uh, you know, blend together. Uh, they are side by side and most of the time when a person belonged to the church, they also attended the school. So we're excited about uh, getting this project off the ground and one day being finished, we'll be open to the public. We also um, would like to tell you about uh, some of the things that have been accomplished since 2011 for the St. John Family Life and Fitness Center. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 2011, we elected a uh, eight member board of directors and a, lot, a couple of the, us uh, alumni of the school that happened in 2011. I also received the um, RAS approval for the 501C3 status in May of 2011. So in 2016, we, we unveiled a Virginia Historical Land Highway marker for the school. That is in front of the school. So you're, you're welcome to come and, and read the history of the school there. Um, in 2018, that was in 2016. So in 2018 was the first project that we undertook, which was phase one. And with that phase one, we installed a septic system. And that was accomplished with money that was raised from fundraisers, from private donors, as well as from a grant from the Charlottesville Area Community Foundation uh, from the Bama Works Grant. And that happened in 2018, and that was completed in 2018. Uh, the second phase was an, an effort to stabilize the foundation of the building. And we received a $75,000 grant from the federal government to assist us with this project. It came from a grant called the African American Civil Rights Grant. And um, in addition to the 75,000, we also received 15,000 more dollars from uh, the Charlottesville Area Civil Rights, uh, no, Charlottesville Area Community Foundation uh, to assist with this project. And with those, with those money, we completed phase two and that was done in 2019. Also in 2019, we were listed on the National Register for Historical Places. So in 2020, when everything else was going, not going right, we were successful because um, the Building Goodness Foundation volunteered to help us. They, they adopted us as one of their initiatives to uh, support us in phase three of renovating the, renovating the school, which is the interior part of the school. And after I'm finished, the next person you will hear will be a lady from this organization, and she'll tell you more about it and how they are supporting organizations like us here in the United States as well as overseas. So we're excited and thankful for Building Goodness Foundation that is assisting us with our phase three project. Uh, as, term, and, and, and as the timeline, as we look at the timeline, <clears throat> as well in, in, in how, when we will complete this uh, project, well, there's a couple of things that have to be accomplished. First, we would have to get approval for a special use permit. That would be the first thing we need to do so we can get our 
uh, uh, application approved for starting the project and also will be subject to the availability of funds, which we have some now which could start the project, but we also have applied for a couple more grants that we will know the results of those grants in June of this year. And um, once those, uh, those things are accomplished, then uh, it's, it's estimated that we probably could get the job finished within six to nine months. So we look forward to that and we pray that we will get the money and that that project can be, that project can be completed and we can open our doors and welcome everyone. And this, I like to say too, that this um, center is not just for African-American, it's not just for the Carpam area. It will be for everyone to enjoy and participate. And we look forward to that day when that happens. Pastor Hawkins, do you have anything that you'd like to add? What happened to her? Ah, oh, yes. Pastor Hawkins. Did he drop off? Okay. I think he might have. Okay. 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 I can hear. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to share. I think that um, some are calling in and um, like to say good evening again. And I just kind of wanted to share what our mission and what we're all about. And we will provide the physical, educational, and spiritual programs to enhance everyone, as um, Rebecca has already stated, the entire community and living a better quality of life. And, and just kind of wanted to add that we are one of seven um, schools in um, Rosenwald schools in Albemarle County. And, and uh, um, we um, educated our blacks back in the um, 1920s. So we're excited and just wanted to say thank everyone for joining on this platform tonight. Advanced by um, Jody. Okay, I guess it's on to me. Um, I am Kathy Garstang. I am a staff member at Building Goodness Foundation. Building Goodness Foundation is a nonprofit construction organization that has its roots in Charlottesville. For more than 20 years, we have partnered with the highest quality NGOs, domestic nonprofit organizations to design, build, and renovate and repair structures which increase the capacity to do great work. We connect skilled volunteers from the design and construction industries with opportunities to use their professional skills for a good cause. In 2020, when the pandemic hit, um, we adjusted uh, our international work and focused mostly on Charlottesville work. So we developed a fund called Seville Builds. Uh, Seville Builds, um, supports construction projects that promote economy, racial equity, and a healthy community. Seville Builds is a coalition of builders, community members, organizations, donors, and volunteers who join together to support a healthy, equitable, and prosperous Charlottesville. Together, we complete building and home repair projects to support small businesses that are struggling as a result of the pandemic, nonprofit organizations that are overwhelmed by their current need, and those that are working for racial justice, and low income owner, homeowners that have urgent repair needs and who are high risk for COVID. We've had great response with that fund um, and our goal is to raise over $300,000. Right now we stand at about 220,000. So we feel we are now armed with not only our skilled volunteers but actually some funds to put towards these uh, very important projects. This project team at St. John Family Life and Fitness Center is comprised of um, architect Jody Lahendro. He uh, works for UVA in facilities management. He is a historic preservation architect um, and he is the right guy for the job in this one. Um, the preservation of this um, historic structure really needs his expertise and we're glad to have him on board. We also, the team is comprised of structural engineer Spring Point Structural with Craig Swift, mechanical electrical uh, plumbing engineer or 2RW with Bob Kroll, civil engineer Clark Gathright, um, 
we have a contractor on board with Alexander Nicholson, uh, Michael Boggs being the project manager, who is helping us with uh, costing, estimating timelines, um, all the things needed to get it um, accomplished. And we also have a, an interiors um, project manager, Millwork, um, Kurt Hoffman, that is with Gaston and Wyatt. So um, we uh, appreciate all that this team is doing for us at no cost, pro bono, um, to the project. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing this project move forward to the next phase. Thank you. Well, I'm trying to get it to advance. <laughs> Try going to your arrow up in the to toolbar to the down and see if that works. The toolbar down. Up, up at the top. Where is that, Carolyn? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. The third row down, third row down. See where you got some arrows, right? By the number of pages. Uh, arrow, oh, yeah, here. Oh, no, that's, well. It should be up at the top. Okay. Um, oh, you're, got, you're, it. Yeah, got it. Right there. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. You saved you're me. You're very oh, welcome. I've already muffed it. Um, <laughs> hi, my name is Jody Lahendro. I'm honored to have been um, selected by Building Goodness Foundation to be part of this incredible project. Um, you've already seen a map. You know where the project is on St. John Road. It's about 1.3 miles northwest of Cobham. Um, the school, St. John School was originally constructed in, 20, in 1923. It was part of the Julius Rosenwald uh, program for constructing uh, small school buildings throughout the South. Over 5,000 were constructed. Uh, and they were specifically for the education of African-American students, children in the rural areas. Uh, it, St. John School, these are photos from the, just after it was constructed. Uh, they are at the Fisk uh, University uh, archives. Uh, they have the Rosenwald archives now. Um, it was a school. Uh, that served the Cobham and Gordonsville rural areas uh, until 1954, at which point it was sold and became a residence um, until 2003 when it was purchased by St. John uh, Baptist Church, uh, and which as uh, Becky has already described, have, they have been doing uh, repair, selective repairs since then. Um, and you've seen this also, um, there is actually very little exterior changes proposed for uh, conversion of the school building to the community center. Um, there is an existing parking lot for the church that currently surrounds the school that will stay. Uh, at the most on the exterior front, there is going, we are converting two of those spaces to handicapped spaces, putting in a sidewalk to one of the uh, exterior original doors. We do have to add a handicapped ramp to the outside of that door, which I'll show you a um, drawing of later. Um, and otherwise, um, I'll also describe a couple of small changes we're making to the outside um, in a bit. You can see the relationship between the school here and the church uh, beyond. Uh, for existing conditions, this is a floor plan showing uh, the floor. Oh, well, of course it is. And um, the pochade in red here are the original historic walls of the school building. It was originally a two classroom teacher called a two teacher school building uh, number 20 of the model school plans put out by Rosenwald. This was one classroom and here was another. Um, and then they always had an industrial room um, and that's uh, this third room. Uh, the 
changes that were made by the residents in 54, all these hatched walls are those uh, additions and changes. Um, they also put on a deck and then converted two of the windows to smaller windows and added a door. Um, they uh, also in 54 closed up the second exterior entrance, uh, which we will restore as an entrance. Um, this shows you uh, pictures of how this, the uh, building looks today. There was a fire in the kitchen that is in this uh, southeast corner that destroyed some of the wall and ceiling finishes. Um, but in the rest of the building, the original finishes are still beneath later finishes put on when it was changed to a residence. I estimate about 85% of the original historic finishes still exist in the school. And we are going to be restoring all of those uh, original finishes. This is a uh, plan of the proposed adaptive reuse. Um, we are uh, converting the spaces to the programmatic needs of the community center. Um, and thus you'll see new walls uh, post shade in this gray. Those are the walls that we're proposing to put in for the uh, new uses. We are gonna keep a kitchen in this corner where it was in the residence because we're not gonna change the, the uh, door out to the uh, existing deck. This is still, uh, will be very useful to the community center. Um, we are going to restore the original opening that was between the two classrooms. This was a feature in most all Rosenwald schools uh, to allow the community to use the school buildings, not only for schools, but also for community uses, larger events. And uh, it's wonderful that we're going to be able to restore that ideal uh, here in this building. Um, a exercise room is being installed at the end. Once again, we're going to put in folding doors to allow this whole space to be used for community events. Uh, toilets will be added. And, uh, and this shows the handicapped ramp that will be uh, installed just outside of vestibule, this, this second um, uh, entrance door. This is a, a quick drawing of the exterior of that handicapped ramp. That is really the only exterior change, um, uh, new thing that we be put onto the building. It will be constructed uh, in pressure treated lumber and then painted uh, to match the building itself after it has weathered. Uh, and that is the end of my presentation, Mariah. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jody, and, and everyone that presented tonight. Um, as we head into the Q&A portion of the meeting tonight, I just want to make, um, make sure everyone knows how to participate if you, if you want to. Um, if you're joining us online, you can share your questions or comments by clicking that raised hand button at the bottom of your toolbar. Uh, this will notify our meeting facilitator tonight that you would like to speak and you'll be placed in the queue. If you're joining by phone, um, the way to participate is to press star nine, um, and that will place you in the queue to speak as well. Um, and for those um, answering questions tonight and panelists, um, it might take a minute for questions to come in, but if you have questions, I encourage you to ask them now. Um, it's a great way to, to kind of um, start a conversation with people um, involved in the projects and ask your questions directly. And, and have um, your input heard. Um, this is one of the, there are other opportunities to do this in the future, but this is kind of the first opportunity. So um, it ends up being one of the most opportune moments um, to, to kind of make changes if there are any or just have it considered. Mariah, at this time I don't have anybody with their hand up. Wait. Mr. Claiborne does on your side. It, first, let me apologize for my camera being off. I'm actually cooking dinner at the moment, but I've been listening in and this is a, a great, great project. I was so proud to see Jody on here. He's such a, a dear friend of mine. I have a ton of respect for, 
And uh, we served in the planning commission for the city of Charlottesville together for a few years. And uh, I can't think of a better historic architect to, uh, to be doing this. Uh, my one question is, will, will there be a way to tell the story like through interpretive signage? Is that part of the plan? Maybe it's some site signage or um, signage within the building. Just curious, because it's such a great story to tell. Becky, I think you'd be the appropriate one to answer this. Uh, you're on mute right now. Don't know what happened there, sorry. Um, yes, uh, our plan is to, uh, to, to have um, computers there. We also, we have in the past, we have on our website right now, we have uh, digital uh, recordings of alumni that have attended the school. And that will be part of what we will uh, present to the participants of the um, that will be available to participants of the uh, of the center. Uh, we also will have alumni there to tell our stories, and we also will have a museum with artifacts that will display. We plan to set up a, 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 a simulation of a classroom in that time with the little pot bella stool and the desk and the big blackboards. That was some of the features of the school. So that's how we plan to continue to tell the story. I hope that answered your question. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I look forward to visiting it when it's, when it's all said and done. And then I do have a follow-up question when you had the floor plan up. Was that a residential kitchen or a commercial kitchen? It is uh, a res. It's a catering kitchen. So right now we're in discussions with uh, Mr. Dellinger about uh, whether or not we could have a stove um, without having to put in fire rated uh, separation uh, between that uh, uh, area. And it it it's we 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 believe well. We know Mr. Dillinger has said that if we stick with uh, microwaves, we don't have to, and that it will um, uh, will be able to to keep all the historic finishes in that space. So that's what that's a decision that the um, the community center is still um, uh, uh, turning over and will be making. For for those of you who don't know, Michael Dillinger is our county building um, inspector. And Corey, I wanted to point, you mentioned the blackboards, or Becky did. Um, the original historic blackboards are still in place. They had been painted over, and I didn't recognize them at first, but uh, on, on further research and also researching other Rosenwalds, um, I finally realized that they were still in place, and they are black on both sides, so we can turn them around and restore the, the blackboard itself. That, that is great. Thank you so much. And like I said, I know we're in good hands with Jody. Thank you. Um, Supervisor Lapista Kirtley, I see you have your hand up as well. Oh, yes, I do. I tell you, I am so 100%. 150, 200, 5 million percent behind this. I will be supporting this. I will do whatever I can. To, I know you're raising the funds. I have been there. I haven't been inside, but I have been by that. I, I even took a picture of the plaque and everything. Um, definitely behind this, my, my late husband um, went to a one-room schoolhouse. So I am so in favor of this. I'll be doing Sorry for getting emotional, but I, I just love this project and um, I'll be doing everything I can in my power to support it. And um, just wanted to know, when is your, your timeline? I know you're raising money and I will also help be involved in that. Uh, but what, what it, when is your time? If I can be, I hope I'm not, that's not a conflict of interest. <laughs> No. <laughs> if I'm in jail, you'll have to come and visit me. <laughs> we'll come. <laughs> but but um, uh, yes, when is your timeline for completion and how much money are you raising? Uh, I've already talked to others, so I know we'll be donating. And um, I'm just so excited about this. And I did to follow up on 
Corey, Corey Claiborne's uh, question, and by the way, he's an outstanding planning commissioner for the Vivana district. And um, if you put an electric stove in, would that have the same criteria for the firewall? It would, oh, yes. okay. Mm. I mean, it'd almost be a shame not to have a stove. Yeah. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I mean, that's not good cooking if you use a microwave. <laughs> now, and, and I don't cook, I do not cook, but I am looking forward to, um, yeah, <laughs> to some good food. <laughs> well, thank you, we look forward to having you. <laughs> oh, I will be there. Yeah. I will definitely um be there at the opening at the at every anything you want me there i will be there thank you thank you Appreciate so, so I, I love the neighborhood and i'm oh and i'm sorry i'm hoping because i heard you mention computers that's why i wanted to know when the ending date is because i've been working for the past year to get fiber out to the cobham area oh, and, and it's, it's oh it's yes. Believe me, I've got everyone on speed dial, and uh, we thought we had it with CenturyLink, and unfortunately, CVEC is coming in, and that's fine, because they're supposed to do it in 18 months, uh, but they were only going to a certain portion of, of Cobham, um, of St. John Road, so I'm trying to figure all that out and trying to get uh, fiber out through the whole you know, road. Mm -hmm. that's, like I said, it's something I've been working on. Uh, for the past year. Um, Great. So, you know, to I, answer I, your I, question. I'm, okay. Yeah, go ahead, but Judy, I'm sorry. Uh, Jody, I, was, I was trying to answer or try to answer a supervisor's question about timeline. And um, so, a lot of that is I don't know the county well about how they how long it takes them to, for something to go through the system but i'm hearing it'll be about june probably that we have the um planning commission sup um hearing and um and then it'll be another month before it goes to the supervisors and then of course uh, the building official won't start to look at the plans until after it the sup is approved so that'll be another month or two once we get started, uh, which sounds like it's going to be end of the summer, fall, um, we anticipate about nine months. If we have all the funds, we anticipate about my, nine months of construction. Um, so if everything goes well, uh, maybe in a little, uh, 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 a little more, uh, in about a year. Yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe next. Uh, early fall, summer, late, late spring, early summer. Okay, okay, that gives me a timeline to work on for the internet, um, for the fiber. <laughs> oh, wonderful, thank you. We'll try and push that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll shame them into it if I have to, I don't care. <laughs> I still don't have anybody with their hands up on the attendee side. Jody, while we wait, is there any, or or any anyone from the applicant team, is there any other information that you would like to take the opportunity to provide? Is that for me, Mariah, you asked me? Mm -hmm. Oh, or anyone on your team? Uh, information that we That you um, haven't already discussed in depth. Yes, no <laughs> Oh, oh, I see. We got to we, uh, uh, stretch it out, huh? Um. <laughs> Captive audience. Yeah, well, I can say that the for the Rosenwald system, typically there are uh, about almost 400, 380 Rosenwald schools that were built in Virginia. Um, seven were in Albemarle County. Um, two of those have been destroyed. Uh, and of the five remaining, uh, four of them are now residences and privately held. So this would be the only Rosenwald in Albemarle County that would be accessible to the public. Um, and typically, the, the way the Rosenwald system work, the uh, Julius Rosenwald Fund, he was the president of Sears at the time, and he and Booker T. Washington got together and created this, this fund and opportunity. Um, and the, 
the Resident Wall Fund would donate a third of the funds for the construction of the school. The local African American community would donate a third, and the last third would come from the state education uh, department. And that was a way that they deliberately made sure that it was a um, every way had a vested interest in the school and that it would be kept up and it would be maintained as a school. Um, so it's a, it's a fascinating program. We're losing them already. Um, the, the, I think it's estimated of the 383 that were constructed, about a third of them are only remaining. Um, so they're disappearing um, and it's, a, it's a, a, an incredible program. Uh, that had an amazing impact, as you heard from Becky, on the, the communities, uh, the rural communities, and the African American um, uh, advancement. And um, so it, it's something that we need to cherish, preserve, and, and educate. Yep. And may I ask how much money will we be, will we need to raise? About approximately. Kathy is the best one for this. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> we, I, I guess it's, it's a tough thing to know. Okay. So many people are donating so much in terms of materials and labor. Um, if we had to pay for all this up total, you know, in out of pocket, we would be upwards of $300,000. Um, and I could estimate that we'd probably be double that, so. But most of the items are being donated. I mean, what, what do we have to do to make this work? So again, we've got um, a lot, we, we believe we have quite a bit of labor donated, um, just in the fact that the whole team is, is doing work pro bono. Um, we, BGF, can come with some um, volunteer carpenters, weekend warriors to do some demo work, to do some a variety of tasks. We are also then utilizing our connections and contacts to get with subcontractors to ask them to give um, a, a break on their pricing. Um, and a lot of it's, it's, it's coming together. Um, and Becky and her team has put together quite a bit of large grants that will cover these expenses that um, that we can't, we can't ask for free. We're gonna have to pay something, um, of course. Uh, so the, hopefully those grants will then cover um, those chunks that we will have to, to, to pay for. So we're, we're leveraging all we can and any additional support would be appreciated. <laughs> Absolutely, just let me know what I can do. Let me know whose arm I need to twist. Did I say that? I didn't say that. Uh, but just, you know, let me know. You have a hammer? Oh, I, oh yes. And, oh yeah. I'll have a hammer. You show me what to do. I'll do it. Um, might be a little dangerous, but you know, that's okay. <laughs> I know Corey would be out there. Oh, Corey's going to be out there. He'll probably have his newborn baby who was born in on uh, December. Was it December 7th, Corey? Anyway, newborn baby strapped to his back, but that's okay. He can still work. And that's right. Baby in one arm swinging the hammer with the other. That's right. <laughs> We'll be there. Um, Carolyn, do we have any questions from, from participants? We do not. If there are any uh, attendees that would like to ask a question at this time, please raise your hand so that we can give you the opportunity to speak. Okay, we might stay on for another um, three minutes. But if there are no more questions, we might wrap up early tonight. Um, Jody, I'm going to present uh, my screen. It looks like you've stopped sharing. Um, I'm just going to share my contact information one last time in case people would like to follow up. While she's doing that, you can contact me through abomoral.org. Uh, and my email is B, Kirtley, B K I R T L E Y at abomoral.org.
So my email is provided below. Okay, well, Jody, I just want to thank you and your team for being here tonight, and Supervisor B. Lapiso Kirtley and Corey Claiborne, um, Commissioner, thank you as well. Um, uh, if once we set a date for the Planning Commission hearing and the Board of Supervisors public hearing, that will be posted on the county um, calendar. And if you have any questions about those dates or the project presented here tonight, feel free to contact me. Um, email works best during this COVID-2021 20, <laughs> 2021 environment. Um, but otherwise, thank you again for joining us tonight. And Carolyn, if you could wrap us up, I would appreciate it. All right, thank you all for coming. This video will be uploaded tomorrow morning to the county website. Uh -oh. Go to the county calendar and uh, view it anytime after 9 a.m. tomorrow. You'll go to the calendar, go to this meeting, and then you'll see the recording there. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Do the same. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank you, Supervisor, for your yes, thank uh, you. support. And, and thank you to Ms. Uh, Commissioner Claiborne for his support. I cannot wait until this opens up. And oh, um, great. I'm, I'm hoping there's good food and barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't cook, so <laughs> and I'm gonna look forward to hearing your story about your husband. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>